Kevin, what did you think of? The giant marshmallow captain disillusion. Hey team, I'm really sorry about this. All right, we should uh, fire all our beams at it at once, right? But we don't want to cross the streams. No, that's actually just in the movies. Speaking of movies... Greetings, corporeal beings. I'm not always 34 meters tall, but when I am, the square cube law increases my volume more than the cross-section of my muscles, and I collapse. So, how do you fake a building-sized ghost of a corporate mascot in the era before digital compositing? Well, you make a miniature in the form of a guy in a suit and place him into an even smaller miniature of a street, complete with realistic buildings, trees, and even model cars pulled on strings by every available member of the visual effects crew. But no matter how realistic it all looks, it's not enough. It takes an instant for this 1 24th scale Ecto-1 to drop a few centimeters, but for a real car this would constitute several meters. To cover that distance at the same speed takes more time. We can't simulate this by simply slowing down the footage. The temporal information between frames just isn't there. But by filming at a higher frame rate than we play back, we can effectively alter the scale of time itself to match the scale of our miniatures. Raising the frame rate in camera like this is called overcranking. In fact, there's a handy formula for figuring out exactly how much to overcrank. You take the final playback frame rate and multiply it by the square root of the model's scale. Well, the larger number in the ratio of the model's scale. You know what? Don't worry about it. The Stay Puft Marshmallow Man shots in Ghostbusters were overcranked at 72 frames per second. Not because it was physically accurate, but because that's what looked good to the filmmakers. In the end, that's all that really matters. Huh. Interestingly, undercranking is also a thing. If you shoot at a slower than normal frame rate, the resulting footage moves faster and things feel smaller. This was used on Ghostbusters for the Onion Head ghost. You know, Onion Head, the green guy? Uh are you talking about Slimer? No, no, not Slimer. He wasn't called that until the sequels. I have the Ghostbusters shooting script right here, last revised October 7th, 1983. The word Slimer doesn't appear anywhere in here. The character is described as the gluttonous onion-headed vapor, or just the vapor, Jake. The vapor, the vapor. Anyway, Slimer was a complex puppet suit operated by eight people and worn on the top half of a performer's body. He was pretty big. To make him seem smaller and cuter, he interacted with oversized props, and his actions were filmed at 20 frames per second, and for one scene even as low as 8. And of course, to actually make him appear ghostly and move him in the scenes, he was shot against black or blue and optically composited on a computerized multiplane system, or COMPC for short. By repeatedly exposing the same piece of film to different passes of footage and animated mats, Timed with precisely controlled camera moves, the effects artists were able to combine just about any element in any position on any background. And that's what I call movie magic. I love him. Me too. Fire it up! Oh. Thanks, the effects artist!